What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Round Ball Stew. I'm Dan Titus, joined with Raphael Johnson. We got a lot to talk about. LeBron's breaking scoring records. So first, let's just talk about that. Raph, were you watching last night? Did you see the history go down? Oh, of course. I think it was good. The, the, the schedule setup was really good, and that, that was basically the only game going on after the second half. So right. if you weren't tuned in, maybe you had an early bedtime or something. But it, it's always really cool to see actual history um, take place. Uh, and also to see Kareem Abdul-Jabbar receive his flowers. I think you can't receive him enough when you talk about his greatness, his longevity on the court and off the court. So it was really cool to have him out there for that special moment. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's been a long path for someone to surpass 300, three, yeah. 38,887 points. Um, I thought it was really cool just being that, you know, in the backdrop of this, Kareem and LeBron haven't always seen eye to eye. And mm -hmm. obviously Kareem humbled himself in that moment to yeah. just let let LeBron take take that moment in and definitely special. I feel like they shouldn't have done the whole celebratory thing in the middle of the game. I thought that kind of messed up the vibe, but like, Hey, respect to the thunder, because that's probably one of the, the more historical moments that, I mean, I was surprised that they lost that game after that, man. It's like everybody's attention was just on LeBron and then they, they didn't finish out the game, but um, yeah, it's just crazy to watch LeBron. Like I've been watching him since high school mm -hmm. um, and just to watch his maturation, be able to, you know, defy all of the, the naysayers, the doubters, and, like, mm -hmm. actually be able to, to get to this point in his career. Like, he's going to – I mean, he's already fourth in assists. He's going to have so many records by the end of this, man. It's just remarkable to watch him play basketball for this long and sustain his performance for this yeah. long. Yeah, he's – you think about it, you know, the stories we read about his childhood. He's not supposed to be here. No. And yet, here he is. So, I think it's – you know, you think about that – everything he's accomplished, it's incredible. And you ain't catching John Stockton in assists. I can tell you that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, but hey, leading scorer, you're already top five in assists as well. He's going to have so many accolades, like you said, by the time he's done. And he looks like he's got a, a few more years in him. He looks healthy. You know, he looks like he's still enjoying the game and whatnot. So let's see where this takes us. Yeah, man. I think this is going to be – it's going to be so hard for anyone to break this record, I feel like. And I know people in, you know, 1984 were probably saying that as Kareem was trying to approach yeah. Wilt's record. Um, but, like, I just don't see it. Like, with him being able to drop 20 a game from the moment he mm -hmm. stepped into the league at 18 years old yeah. to the time that he's 40-plus, like, it's going to be very hard, even with load management, I think, for some of these players to end up playing for up into their 40s. So. I don't know. We'll see what happens, man. But I think that this one's going to be one of those Jerry Rice type records where it's like yeah. <laughs> no one's coming close to that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but yeah, we got a lot of other stuff to talk about because it's trade deadline season. It's tomorrow. A lot of rumors. Not much has really gone down since the Kyrie Irving uh, trade to Dallas. We'll talk about that um, in a little bit. But um, yeah, let's talk about that. We're going to get into the schedule as well. But general trade deadline thoughts, Raphael. Um what are you doing typically in these weeks leading up to the deadline? Have you been spending any waivers, um, any waiver options like earlier in the week? I really haven't because I feel like there's still so much to, to de be determined in the, in the course of this trade deadline with expiring contracts, veterans, uh, people just wanting to go different places. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is probably the nice window of time where you should probably be looking to make those, those pickups midweek, uh, you know, before we get to the deadline here. Yeah, I think, you know, we mentioned some guys on previous podcasts. There are a couple that you may want to stash, like, say, a Zach Collins in San Antonio um, yeah. is one example. But for the most part, like you said, this has been a trade deadline where we don't really have any clear sellers right now. We have a lot of buyers, but not too many concrete sellers. And the play-in tournament is part of that. Uh, more teams feel like they have a chance to get in there and, and take a roll of the dice, so to speak. But – now, even Toronto, we don't know which direction they're going to go, in, and they're probably the team that's going to have the biggest impact on this trade deadline. Yeah, it's a great point. Um, and much of the reading that I've been doing, you know, trying to get the inside information from uh, my folks at, in, at Yahoo Sports and then Mark Stein, it seems like Toronto's the one that everyone's kind of waiting yeah. to make a move here because they got OG Ananobi that, you know, is definitely going to carry a lot of draft capital with it. Pascal Siakam's been mentioned in a couple of trades. Fred Van Vliet, and then you have the most likely person I think that's going to get traded is probably Gary Trent Jr. Yeah. But, I mean, there's still a lot of value there. 
mm -hmm. um, that, that we got to figure out, you know, what's going to be the, the outcome of that. Um, and we don't know what Toronto's going to do. Like they're in this weird yeah. spot where like, do we mail it in? I, I don't know, but there's some, also some other teams that I thought were pretty interesting too. Um, but before we get to those, let's talk about the Kyrie trade since that one, the one that actually went down and there has been some fantasy impact to that Cam Thomas and Edmund Sumner. I mean, are these guys the the pickups that are you're gonna hold on for a little while? I mean, I think Cam Thomas is kind of hard to drop mm -hmm. him after dropping three straight forty point games yeah. um, in a row here. But what are you doing, and, and what do you think is the fantasy implications of that Kyrie trade? Yeah, I think it's big in terms of Cam. Yeah, you hold on to him until the wheels fall off. Like he, I don't know what's gonna happen with that rotation, but even though Spencer Dinwiddie can score. They still have a gap to make up with losing Kyrie for one. And we don't know what's going to happen with Kevin Durant either. So I think when you have a score like Cam Thomas, you hold on to him. Sumner, I think I'm more likely to drop him just because there's still this fixation on playing Ben Simmons starters minutes. And based <laughs> on what we saw last night, I know he's been hurt. Like, Sumner only played 16 minutes off the bench last night in that loss of the sun. So I don't think you can hold on to him, especially if Simmons is going to be available uh, moving forward here. Yeah, um, man, it's crazy to watch Cam Thomas's roster ship go up, man. He's at 74% in Yahoo leagues now. So everybody's caught on. Yeah. It's hard not to. Um, I agree with you. Like, it, I don't know. It seems like most of the, the intel going around the league is that while teams are inquiring about Durant, the Nets don't really look like they're yeah. in a hurry to trade them. Most mm -hmm. likely, if this is going to go down, it's going to be in the offseason. So, um, but in the short term, you know, there was also rumors that maybe the Nets weren't done trading. Perhaps mm -hmm. they could flip Spencer Dinwiddie. Uh, I just watched a press conference with Dinwiddie, and he made quite, quite a few jokes about, why would y'all mm -hmm. put in all this effort, bringing him to media day in this press conference, um, if they're ultimately going to trade him. So it sounds like he's going to be staying in Brooklyn. Well, at least technically, they can't because the, the trade was made official, so they can't move oh, okay. those guys on. Now, that's why I kind of hung, hung around a bit, I think, because they wanted to see if they could kick the tires on some All other right, ideas third. to add That's a third right. team or whatnot. But now that it's official, Dorian and Spencer will be in Brooklyn, at least for the remainder of the season. Yeah, I think Dorian's definitely a person that's going to emerge in the yeah. rotation, um, just because he's so good defensively. Yeah. Um, I, I'm wondering who that kind of impacts. Like, maybe it's a Maybe it's a little bit of Royce O'Neal, but it's probably more so Ben Simmons than anyone. Yeah. Um, because Ben doesn't do anything for you offensively, whereas at least DFS can shoot the three ball mm -hmm. and, and put the points on um, and score the basket. So, or score the basketball, excuse me. Um, so, yeah, curious to see how that ends up. But I think Cam Thomas is the clear winner of this deal. What about yeah. on the Mavs side? Like uh, Josh Green definitely went off in his time without Luka. Do you think that that's something that can be sustained over the course of the rest of the season? <laughs> I don't know about the scoring, but he's going to be of higher importance to this group just because of what they lost defensively um, with Dorian Finney-Smith. So Josh Green's a capable perimeter defender. I think he can guard both wing positions personally. So I think he's going to be of greater importance to them. Um, and like you think about it, I think Dallas is going to have to make another move because we're kind of sitting here looking at that defense and saying, what well, defense? just wait till, yeah, we wait till <laughs> Maxi Kleba comes back. And Maxi Kleba is a good defender, but when that's your approach and you're trying to contend, I'd imagine that you're in trouble. So I think they're going to have to do something else here. You got to expect that uh, winning is going to have to matter here for Kyrie. Yeah. You know, if they're going to, yeah. I mean, we'll see if Cuban's probably going to give them the bag just because of how much they, they, they mortgage for this. Yeah. But um, yeah, you know, with Christian Wood there, he's now back in the lineup. He saw what uh, 16, 18 minutes in his mm -hmm. first game back. They got to make another move. Tim Hardaway Jr. is a person that's been floating around the trade, um, the trade market. So maybe they can upgrade him, uh, get a wing there. But I've also seen some other players that actually would be really interesting because, like, I think they do need to bolster their their front court. I think Mason Plumley would be really intriguing. Yeah. Jakob Pertl would Pertl would definitely be intriguing too. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we'll see what the Mavs do. But they got to do something. I don't know. Maybe they. Because Christian Wood's interesting because, like, they traded for him, but he's got an expiring deal. So you could actually, yeah. like, flip him for pretty good assets. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see what the Dallas Mavericks do outside of that. But, um, yeah, let's get some other trade stuff. Um, pretty much nothing burgers. Um, <laughs> Kessler Edwards went to the Kings. Um, pretty much he's going to have to join their G League affiliate. No fantasy yeah. implications there. Dwayne Dedman went to the Spurs. That was a cash 
cash saving move by the uh, Miami Heat. And uh, I read recently read by John Hollinger of the Athletic. Um, if you really want to look into what's going to happen at the deadline and who might make moves, follow the money. And mm-hmm. it's crazy to see how many teams are actually at the um, the, the 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 tax deadline. Here. Yeah, 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 yeah. The tax they're at this tax threshold where they got to dump mm-hmm. a whole bunch of salaries. So there could be some players that are moved, but it may not be as significant in terms of like yeah. the Kyrie Irving. It's going to be all these bench players like Furkan Korkmaz of the <laughs> of the Sixers is demanding a mm-hmm. trade. Like, okay, bro, like you're just trying <laughs> to get your salary, maybe Matisse yeah. Thibel. But I think you could probably see some lower end value kind of creeping up on the waivers if teams are trying to get to a tighter rotation and they're offloading some of this dead yeah. weight, so to speak. Um, so something to pay attention to as the deadline kind of approaches here. But we already talked about the Toronto Raptors and what they could or could not be doing. Um, it looks like the Jazz also could be making moves. I've seen some rumors uh, from Tim McMahon of ESPN, Mike Conley and Malik Beasley to the Lakers for Russell Westbrook. Is that a trade that you would be interested in from a real-life perspective? And then fantasy-wise, I mean, for Utah, that probably opens up some some nice minutes for some guards there. I think real life, because Conley would be a, a clear upgrade on Dennis Schroeder when we talk about starting point guard position. And Schroeder takes better care of the basketball than Russell Westbrook. So if you drop him in that backup role, you're not as worried about the live ball turnovers. That can be problematic. Beasley will give them another shooter. So I think that would help the Lakers in addition to getting off that money with Westbrook, even though he'll be a free agent at season's end. For Utah, I don't really know how this helps them. Um, obviously they would have a hole that the point guard position to fill, but his timeline isn't on, on track with guys like Larry Markkinen, Walker Kessler, Ochai Baji. Those are the three guys that I think Utah doesn't want to part with right now. So I think whatever they do is going to have to be geared towards amplifying those three players, both for now and in the future. Yeah. It's in a really interesting and tight race here at the back end of this play in tournament. I mean, mm-hmm. the eight seed through the 11th seed are a game within each other. Um, actually to the 12th seed, the Portland Trailblazers are right there at number 12. So yeah, yeah they're at this weird spot where it's like, do you, do you trade these assets or do you go for the, for the playoffs here? Mm-hmm. Um, you definitely don't want to waste uh, the season like Lori marketing is having, but at the same time, it's like, oh, maybe we can trade and get some younger assets and build that yeah. future around him, which I think also makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, also read from Sam Amick of the athletic John Collins asking price is starting to come down. Are you surprised by that? Probably not. And if so, what do you think? What's the likelihood? I think we talked about last week, but what's the likelihood he actually gets traded this year? Man, that's a good question. Just because you got a new front office that was changed mid season. So it's like, we don't have past off seasons or or in seasons to kind of use as reference points, but I think it's going to, it's more likely that he gets moved just because of that change in leadership. Um, You got Landry Fields calling the shots now. Maybe he's a bit more willing to to listen on a John Collins deal as opposed to just having his name out there. Um, I think for his sake, fantasy wise and in real life, he needs a move. Uh, you've got yeah. two ball dominant point guards there. He's not getting the touches that he needs, and yeah. so I think it would be a good move for him to get somewhere where he can be kind of more of a focal point. Yeah, um, yeah, totally agree with that. I mean, I think. Uh... Onyeko Kongu is an interesting stash, assuming he gets yeah. traded. And I, I think right now, I mean, he's actually been producing uh, low-end numbers here. So he could be a, a guy that you take a flyer on a, ahead of this mm-hmm. deadline in the event that uh, he does get moved. You mentioned Jalen Johnson last week. Yeah. Um, curious to see if he actually gets more minutes. I would assume so if, you know, mm-hmm. they're trying to invest in the youth in the in the future here. Uh, but, yeah, it's definitely something to watch. Um who else would I want to talk about here? Um, Bones Highland. I've seen a, a lot of a lot of activity around Bones Highland for Nas Reed. I think it makes a lot of sense for the Denver yeah. Nuggets to make that move. Mm-hmm. Um, what are the chances Bones gets traded? I think it's I think he's going to get traded. And is that a person you would stash, assuming that he gets to another team? I w- I would stash him just because I think he's going to ultimately wind up in a situation where the team may not be winning but he'll have the the opportunity to kind of expand his game and go off. I could see him being like a a, like a, a silly season all-star or something like that, where a guy just kind of gets to a new situation and blows up down the stretch, but it doesn't really impact winning. Um, for his sake, I think he needs a move. 
you know, we saw it with Paul Bowl when he was in Denver. Obviously not as extreme just because he wasn't playing to begin with, but they're trying to win now. And if your skill set doesn't fit in exactly with what they need, because they need more defense from him, and he, he's not that kind of player. He's not no. playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's facts. Um, totally agree with that. Um, what are you doing about Detroit? Because they got a lot of players that I think have been rumored to be traded to. Boyan Bogdanovich is still carrying that first round yeah. draft ask, which is he's playing well, but like I don't I don't know that any team wants to pay him that much. Um, but also Alec Burks, I think, is a little bit more affordable. And also mm-hmm. Sadiq Bay. Kind of surprised that the Knicks don't take a look at Sadiq Bay. I feel like that's like a, a nice three and D wing that they could possibly add there that they desperately need. But yeah. you know, they've just been trying to offload Evan Fournier for the last <laughs> for all the season <laughs> with Cam Reddish and Derrick Rose. Just it's just not that attractive, the the assets. But the Knicks have picks, but I don't know that they want to, you know, uh, mortgage that future. Um, but yeah, so what do you think Detroit's ultimately going to do? Are they going to – they're the almost – I mean, they're one of the worst teams in the league here. So, obviously, yeah. they got to do something. I don't think they want to move Sadiq Bey. Um, based on what I've read, he's one guy that I think they want to hold on to. Um, Bogdanovich, interestingly enough, he's someone else they probably want to hold on to. So, I think Bogdanovich would be the one they'd probably be a bit more willing to part with just because of his timeline as right. compared to some of the younger players. Nerlens Noel really isn't going to impact fantasy if he gets moved. I think that's going to happen. Um, you look at Miami; they're probably going to need another big, so maybe something gets worked out there where Detroit can sit and shed some salary. Um, that would be one opportunity. Alec Burks can be helpful to a team, obviously a veteran three and D guy. Um, but I think the veterans; those two are probably the ones most likely to move. Like I don't see like a Rodney Recruiter moving the needle for any other team in the NBA. <laughs> to be in, so. Yeah. And what about Orlando? They got a lot of front court guys that yeah. could be moved. Um, I mentioned it last last week. Like they're at this weird point where, you know, similar to the Raptors, it's like they're on that cusp. Mm-hmm. That they make a leap. Um, they're two game, two and a half games behind the Raptors right now for the uh, 10 spot, who is also tied with the Indiana Pacers, which yeah. is also in a really unique position. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, I feel like all these teams, man, they're just the playing tournaments just making everything interesting to whether people mailing in or not. But yeah, it's yeah. kind of hard to know. But it seems like Mo Bamba is the mm-hmm. name that's that's uh, popping up for Orlando the most, along with Gary Harris and uh, Terrence Ross. But uh, we'll see. They haven't really seen much. There, Orlando's actually in a good cap situation, so or, mm-hmm. or tax situation, so they won't be, you know, having to dump any rosters or yeah. any contracts right now. But uh, definitely something to watch. And then Charlotte, we've talked about them a few times over the last couple of weeks. Um, do you see any any rumblings of Kelly Oubre on the move, um, Mason Plumley, anybody like that? Terry Rozier is a name that's been popping yeah. up a little bit too. Yeah, I think Plumley is the one most likely to move. So in that case, Mark Williams, even Nick Richards, you're probably stashing right now. Um, yeah. You may have to deal with like the unpredictable nature of that backup center position for another game, but I think it's worth it, especially for what we've seen from Mark Williams when he's gotten the playing time recently. So I would stash those two guys because I think it would be more of a timeshare as opposed to one of them dominating the minute minutes if they move public. Yeah. Another player person that I'm stashing is also Jalen McDaniels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he could also get more minutes um, or it could seem to thrive if he just has less competition there. Um, and he gives you some steals rebounds as well as points and threes. All right, let's um, – oh, so I know obviously the trade deadline is going to be tomorrow. You're watching this on Wednesday. Um, what's Roto-Wire got going on uh, tomorrow for the trade deadline? Um, well, Roto-World's got the NBA trade deadline fallout show, which will be Zach Hanshu, Noah Rubin, and Adam King. They will be live on our YouTube channel at 5 p.m. Eastern, so I have a couple hours to digest everything that's happened after the deadline. They'll break down the storylines and answer your fantasy hoops questions. Um, that you may have. So feel, please tune in uh, to the YouTube channel tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Zach's a great dude. Did a mailbag show with him last week. Check mm-hmm. that out if you haven't. But uh, yeah, that's going to be a, a great show to get the live reactions of everything that goes down the trade deadline. Hopefully it has the fireworks that we're all expecting and just not a bunch of uh, roster contract dumps that, we're, <laughs> that it's yeah. currently tracking to. Um, let's talk about some injury stuff because – there's been some a couple of significant injuries and some players that have returned 
Um, Steph Curry is going to be out multiple weeks, upwards of a minimum of a month. Don't even want to explain the scientific diagnosis of what he's going yeah. through, but just know that it's affecting a bo- it's a bone bruise that affected some ligaments in his knee. Mm-hmm. Definitely not a good look for fantasy managers right now. Um, missing someone that's a top, you know, a top six, seven player um, in per game value this year and totals value. Um, Dante DiVincenzo, I think, is, a, is the ad yeah. that I was making because Jordan Poole is widely not available. Um, and Dante, I think he's going to hold this value, man. I think he's, he's really playing a prominent role in that six-man yeah. spot. Um, are you looking at Kevon Looney at all now that he's kind of going to get more minutes now with, with Steve Kerr? You know, obviously noticing that, you know, the small ball lineup wasn't yeah. really working too well. Yeah, for sure. I think he's about like 45% roster somewhere about there. So he's going to be available in, in, in a lot of leagues right now. I wasn't really dropping him when he dropped to the bench personally, just because there's obviously going to be a need for rebounding and some defensive work as well. So yeah, he should see an uptick in minutes and, I think he's a safer choice than rolling the dice on, say, a Jonathan Kaminga, even though he's more widely available. Yeah, and I don't know. The Warriors are – they're one of the people that have a tax – ridiculous tax coming their way. <laughs> so, um, with so much money owed, I, I think it, it would behoove them to probably start trying to move those younger assets if yeah. they're actually trying to close this window of win now. Like, Moses Moody – I probably wouldn't trade Kaminga. Probably Moody. James Wiseman's a James name that's Wiseman. kind of been popping yeah. up. Um and San Antonio, actually, I saw rumored could be a really nice destination for him, being that they can take his salary. Um, mm-hmm. And then ultimately, if they wind up moving Pirtle, you know, I think that he would probably step in line yeah. over Zach Collins, just just given his draft um, capital that he carried. Um, but, yeah, interesting to see what the Warriors are going to do with the deadline here, if anything. Draymond Green said that the Warriors usually don't do anything to the deadline, so he's not expecting anything, but that doesn't mean it can't happen. Yeah. Um, Devin Booker's back. Thankfully for the Suns, they almost blew it last night, mm-hmm. but they got it done. Um, what does this mean for anyone else? Um, Chris Paul, not really scoring much these days. Definitely still getting the dimes and the steals, but um, has seemed to take a back seat offensively. Uh, Booker, Macal Bridges, and DeAndre Aiden had a great game. Yeah. Uh, but are you expecting the Suns to be active at the deadline? I know they also have some some tax concerns. They they have Jay Crowder on the books for $10 million. So they should probably shed mm-hmm. that at some point. Um, but yeah, now with Booker back, what do you think that, what do you think that does to the Suns? Yeah, obviously the Crowder news is the big, big deal here. You know, to move him and get someone back that can actually help you or just get cap relief. Like we don't know what the new owner yeah. is thinking right now. I know he said that he's all in on trying to win, but Saying it and then backing it up when those those bills come due are two completely different things. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'll see what happens there in terms yeah. of what type of tax bill he'd be willing to pay it from the jump. But um, I think Cam Johnson, he may take a slight hit, but I don't think it'll be to the point where you drop him. Um, he's still a good catch-and-shoot guy, a solid yeah. defender, so I think he'll be fine. Torrey Craig wasn't a great fantasy asset to begin with, he moves to the bench and that's going to be probably the end of him as any type of streaming value with Booker back in the lineup. So I don't think too much changes with the uh, Booker return. Maybe Chris Paul has the ball in his hands a little bit less, but I think yeah. he's, he'll be fine. Yeah. And um, Yusuf Nurkic, another guy that's been on the trade block is going to be out until after the all-star break with a calf injury. Um, he's re-injured this calf twice in the same, mm-hmm. in the, the last couple of weeks. So Drew Eubanks has been starting. Um, I do like Trenton Wofford, though. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I think if – being that Nurk is on the block, I think that Wofford's a person that definitely has shown glimpses of his offensive capabilities. He also plays defense. Doesn't rebound as well as Eubanks, mm-hmm. but I think he fits really well with Dame Lillard here. He dropped two 20-point games in week se- uh, 16. Yeah, in week yes. 16. Mm-hmm. So um, – that's a person I'd be stashing here at the deadline. Um, and I know that may seem like him and Eubanks are, are splitting minutes, but I don't know. I, I think I like the upside in Wofford a little bit more here. Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, he's a little bit more versatile offensively. So I can see the upside, you know, in, in Watford. I think they're going to have to make a move. Uh, I don't know who they ultimately trade, but we've heard Josh Hart's name mentioned in trade yeah. rumors because they kind of have a surplus of wings. Like they're not as experienced as Hart, but – If they need help in the interior, which I think they do, even with the healthy Nurkic, they may have to move one of those wings to get what they need there. 
Yeah, yeah, they do. Um, Shaden Sharp apparently recently just bailed out on the dunk contest, which is a huge L for All Star <laughs> Weekend. Oh man, I was so excited to see him in the dunk contest, yeah. and like he's, but I respect it. He said he's going to focus on the second half of the season, which to me is like, oh, are you going to get more minutes? Mm-hmm. Um, because if Josh Hart leaves, I think that that would open up him, Gary Payton the yeah. second, um, also Nasir Little, like all those guys. You know, you're right. Surplus is definitely what they have, so they should probably flip that for uh, another player. Being that the Trailblazers are currently in the 12th spot in the yeah. West, so definitely not where Dame wants to be. Um, Kyle Lowry hits IL. I was fading this guy in the preseason, and it took a little bit of time for this to come back to 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 reality. But yeah, he's on the injured list again. Are you picking up Gabe Vincent, and do you think that there's any possibility that Lowry's moved at the deadline with his ugly contract? Um, and seemingly, I mean, Miami's been no – they haven't been quiet about wanting to move yeah. him. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him in, like, the Clippers, being that they've wanted a point guard. Um, definitely think there's a more opportunity for Gabe Vincent if, um, if Lowry's moved. Yeah, I think Gabe Vincent's played about 31 minutes per game when he started, averaging a little over 16 – so he's given good value uh, when given the opportunity to start. So he's a definite pickup right now. Um, as for Lowry, I wouldn't be shocked if he was moved because even when he comes back healthy, I don't know if he has what they need from that point guard role in terms of playmaking and, and making things happen offensively for himself. Um, he can certainly distribute the basketball, get guys where they need to be and whatnot. But I think they need a little bit more of a dynamic playmaker offensively if they're going to – play as deep into the playoffs as they want to. So yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if he were moved, but yeah, for the short term, you, you pick up Gabe Vincent. Yeah. He's only 7% rostered in Yahoo leagues. Word of caution will probably hurt your field goal percentage. He's only yeah. shooting 40% mm-hmm. this year, but um, has been racking up steals as of late. So steals assists, and uh, he'll give you those three balls for sure too, uh, with a good free throw percentage. So um, the Washington Wizards, they were on a hot streak, and now they're on a low streak um, just that quick. Yeah. Kyle Kuzma's been out with an ankle. He's day-to-day. Bradley Beal, we'll talk about him a little bit more later, but he's now back in the lineup, but he was day-to-day with a left foot injury. Um, do you see the Wizards do anything here at the deadline? I, I, I'm not expecting them to, um, but, yeah, is there anybody that you're picking up, I guess, in terms of short-term value? I think it's really Denny Avida. Like, he's yeah. – just been cooking ever since uh, Rui Hachimura has been out of there. Uh, but is there any other moves that you're making? And if, if Bradley Beal can, continues to miss time or mm-hmm. Kyle Kuzma's injury lingers any longer? Probably not. I think Corey Kispert's kind of limited to points and three pointers in terms right. of his fantasy value. Um, we've seen Kendrick Nunn actually play rotation minutes, uh, which is good for him. It's a bit, you know, I kind of didn't expect that when they fired him, but <laughs> yeah, he's doing it. So I think. You're looking at Kuzma with that expiring contract. I know the Wizards have have said they want to re-sign him. But, I don't know. I think between him and Will Barton, I think Will Barton's the one that would have to happen just because he's been out of the rotation mostly. So long. I know he's gotten back into it recently, but I don't really see much value for him there. And, I don't know. I hope I agree with you, but I kind of hope that you're wrong if they don't do anything because – they seem to take joy in being stuck in that NBA purgatory where <laughs> they're not they're not good enough to contend, but they're not bad enough to really like fully reboot things and get the talent yeah. needed to make that climb. So yeah, I don't I don't know, man. I blame Bradley Beal, man. And like he's just collecting the money. I'm not mad at him for it. Like, why wouldn't he sign that max, yeah. super max deal? But like, I don't know. His availability's been questionable. Daniel Gafford's been good. Um, I think Shallow Leagues, he's certainly made making a uh making it worthwhile to pick him up um, for blocks and rebounds. Um, Yeah. Outside of that, I don't really see that much value. I'm curious to see if, if Kuzma actually does move, but yeah, I don't, I don't think he's going to let's, let's see if he likes it in DC enough uh, that they'll want to re him up. Sounds like they do, but yeah, more to, more to be seen on that Mm -hmm. Um, to get all the rest of the injury news. What what should I go to on Roto world? Uh, You should download the Roto world app to receive your breaking player news. Um, Stay ahead of the competition, favorite players on your fantasy teams. That way you get their latest injury updates, player news, or transactions if someone happens to get moved. And the app is available in your preferred app store today. For sure it is. I use it. Definitely a great resource for any injury information that pops up. But 
let's get to the rest of week 17. Um, only two games on Sunday because of Super Bowl 57. Go Birds. Oh, who, who are you rooting for that game, by the way? Are you a Chiefs guy? Or, I mean, I know you were from uh, – the Northeast there. So you could be, I don't know if is it, is it, is it the Jets? Is it the, is I don't, the Giants? I honestly don't follow the NFL. Um, I know like who the good players and teams are. I'm not like yeah. that, but yeah. You'll watch I'm the looking, game. At, I'm looking not at even? it as a few hours. I don't know. We'll see, <laughs> but I'm looking at it as a few hours off. Um, <laughs> we'll see what happens with everything else, but yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. Just doesn't really interest me. So. Well, for, hey, for everybody's today, for watching, today, enjoy it. <laughs> for today, you could be an honorary Birds fan. I, I, we'll accept you on the bandwagon, man. Right. <laughs> happy to have you. Um, but, yeah, for in terms of teams, though, and uh, waiver moves, the Pelicans and the Thunder only play one more game for the rest of the week. So probably not that appealing in terms of a fantasy team to target for pickups. But uh, Friday is going to be a big night. Mm-hmm. Friday and Saturday, there's a that's a ten player, ten teams, excuse me, ten teams playing a back to back set on Friday and Saturday. The Hornets, Cavs, Mavs, Pacers, Heat, Knicks, Sixers, Kings, Spurs, and Jazz. Um, yeah, it's going to be hard to kind of navigate the waivers here just because of the deadline. But yeah, I would be just saving up as much as you can at this point for that moment yeah. when these trades could go down. Um, but, yeah, is there anybody of those teams that kind of uh, piques your interest um, for the rest of Week 17? First off, what's up to Steven in the chat? Thanks for tuning in. Um, I got to go with Emmanuel quickly. I know he's right around 50% rostered. He's playing close to starters minutes right now, and yeah. he's been more valuable both in the short term and for the whole season in fantasy than either Quentin Grimes or R.J. Barrett. Now, Grimes doesn't really surprise me too much primarily three and D guy, but I've been fading RJ Barrett for a long time now. And this is why he doesn't give you too much outside of scoring and the percentages are poor. He's still playing 35, 36 minutes, which is why his roster percentage is so high. But with, with quickly getting about 28, 29 minutes per game, I think he's worth uh, adding right now. Yeah. He's just outside the top 100 in per game value over the last month. Getting 31 minutes, man. Uh, the field goal percentage is a little low, but yeah. I, I think that you'll take that with the almost two threes per, per contest. Gives you the little bit of rebounds, gives you the assists, and then also I think there's some steals potential. He hasn't really been racking up that much lately, but he's he's he's, he's the best Knicks defender yeah. outside of mm-hmm. Quentin Grimes. So I think that those are those will definitely come. Uh, definitely co-sign getting Emmanuel quickly for sure. Um, Quentin Grimes is also someone I would I would. Definitely take a flyer on if you're down on threes. Um, certainly can help you there. Was a bit inconsistent in week 16, but I think he's kind of turned that corner, yeah. got out of that shooting drought. Um, what about Isaiah Hartenstein? I know that he did not have a good game uh, last yeah. game, but he did have several good games before that. Mm-hmm. Is, what, what is Tibbs doing? Is it back to the juggling of the rotation of Jericho Sims and yeah. Isaiah Hartenstein? Like, can you trust them? Can you not? That's a clear hot hand situation. Like whichever one's playing better is going to get the minutes. Tuesday yeah. night, it was Jericho Sims. Before that, it was Hartenstein. So I don't think you can trust in either, either one of them. It's like the Oklahoma City front court. You really can't trust, like, say, a Jalen Williams or a Mike Muscala, even though they both played well against the Lakers. The right. way that rotation moves, I don't know if you can trust either one of them. I see a similar situation in New York until Mitchell Robinson gets back. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be a couple weeks until Mitchell Robinson comes back. I think he's about two weeks into that four-week timetable now. A um, couple other players that I think I'd be interested in picking up in the mil- in the meantime, Malachi Branham. Uh, Branham, I think he's a player that, you know, if the San Antonio Spurs decide to move on to Josh Richardson, uh, Devin Vassell still on the shelf, he could luck up into some minutes. Definitely shown, shown to be a competent scorer at all levels. Um and he's been getting buckets, so I, I do like his opportunity to get more usage and playing time. Also, Jeremy Sohan has also been out, so that's also helped. But that's mm-hmm. another player I would probably stash later on in the yeah. season once he comes back um, because Pop loves him, and more than likely he's going to get some minutes down the stretch. So definitely worthy of the investment. And, uh, yeah, any other players that you think you're, you're going to pick up for this week and or uh, ahead of the deadline? You know, I think we kind of mentioned him already in terms of like yeah. Josh Green, Trendon Watford, uh, Mark Williams. But 
Yeah, like this is just so tricky just because, like we said earlier, we don't know what a lot of these teams are thinking in terms of are they going to try to make a playoff run or or just tank it because there's so yeah. few teams that are just flat out bad right now. Flat out bad. All right, let's get into our weekly buy, sell, hold. We got some good names on here. Let's kick it off with Andrew Wiggins at number 69 in per game value. Definitely trending the wrong direction since coming back from his injury. Are you buying, selling, or holding? I'm going to hold. Um, hold with a slight lean towards buy just because of the Stephen Curry injury. But like you said, not really trending in the right direction since he returned from his injury. So we'll see. But I think that Curry injury and absence kind of frees some things up for Andrew that probably weren't there before. Yeah, I think he's going to turn the corner. I'm definitely be buying right now. Um I think two games ago probably would have been the best buy spot at when he only scored nine points with an assist in 29 minutes, but came back 32 minutes, 18 points, three rebounds, four dimes, a couple of stocks. So yeah, I would definitely be interested. I'd definitely be interested in buying Wiggins Mm -hmm. now, especially with Steph Curry out, as you said, Uh, Christian Wood, number 61, are you buying, selling, holding? Yeah. Good. He'll help them offensively, but they need more help defensively, and that's not really his thing. Um, I guess we'll hold. You know, I, I think – I don't know, man. It, he's not someone that really <laughs> – he's had – he certainly had his moments, but he's not really a player that excites me fantasy-wise, to be honest with you. I hear you. Um, at this point, I feel like you got to hold just through the deadline. I mean, yeah. if he gets moved to another team, you know, maybe his usage rate goes up not playing it with someone like Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. But, yeah, yeah for now, you just got to hold and, and hope that his fantasy value sustains itself. Um, offensively, he's fine. He just has these games and lapses where he just does nothing defensively, plays himself off the court, um, essentially, in some cases. So um, the next one, pretty polarizing and – I definitely had some slander to this man's name, but he's been absolutely balling lately. Mm-hmm. D'Angelo Russell is 56th in per game value. You buy and sell it or hold it? I think I'm buying right now. It doesn't seem like Minnesota's Ooh. too interested. It doesn't seem like they're too interested in moving him, even though he's on an expiring deal. And I have my questions about his future being like a point guard for that franchise. But I think in the short term, I would be buying on D'Angelo Russell just because, like you said, he's been playing really well lately. Except yep. for that ejection Tuesday night. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I'd be – yeah, I, I don't know that I would buy, but I would certainly hold him. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I would – he plays well. He's been playing well with Anthony Edwards. Him, Kyle Anderson, and they, they've pretty much been the only three good fantasy players for the the, yeah. the Timberwolves lately. So I wouldn't do anything with those guys. I'd sell the hell out of Gobert if you had the opportunity to. If he goes <laughs> off for another 20-and-20 20 20 game, I said this weeks ago, just get rid of him, man. It's not worth yeah. the headache. After last night's dud, like, what do you, he doesn't even score any points. Like, he's not getting any field goal attempts, like the rebounds. <laughs> like, he's a, ah, man, he just doesn't fit there. And Carl <laughs> Anthony Towns may come back. I don't know. Yeah. That, that front court's ugly. Um, but yeah, D'Lo, I would definitely hold on to. Um, I think he's finally found that rhythm. Um, definitely getting his assists back up, and he's shooting well from three lately. So um, as long as he's not, you know, tanking your field goal percentage, D'Lo's actually a pretty good fantasy player. Mm-hmm. Bradley Beal, we talked about it earlier. Day to day with all these nagging injuries, he's getting load managed. He's number fifty one in per game value. You buy and selling or holding? I think I know the answer to this. Yeah, I'm selling. <laughs> Just get rid you of know, the headaches, it, man. It's not worth it. Yeah, yeah, I'm selling. Like I, I, I was on the bandwagon before the season started. I thought he'd really bounce back. Yeah. Um, but it just hasn't happened. Like you mentioned, the injuries. You know, it's just been too much right now. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely selling. And to round it out. Buddy healed at 44, buying, selling, holding. I'm going to hold on to him. I don't think he's going to get moved. Um, Indiana's close enough to that play-in conversation where I think they're going to try to go for it. Obviously, they signed Miles Turner to the extension, and they're young enough where I think they can. They probably see some value in trying to go through this race, see if they can get into the play-in. Uh, top six getting in that six spot may be a bit much to ask of this group, but when you have the pieces that they have, especially like a Tyrese Halliburton, Miles Turner is generally young as well. So, and Buddy Heald, I think he fits into that time frame. So, I think he's someone that I would hold on to right now. 
I agree. I, I think he's a. I think he's definitely a hold. I don't think anyone's going to be selling him right now. Um, I think the only, probably the only reason you would sell him is if you're assuming he's going to get traded. But as you said, I think where Indiana is in their franchise, the fact that they decided to re up Miles Turner, I think that they're actually committed to this core a little bit. Things are working when Tyrese Halliburton is there, so I don't see any reason why they would want to move him right now. And also, he's one of those players that can win you a category every week. Like he leads the the NBA in three pointers, which. I mean, it's pretty impressive considering, you know, Steph Curry still in the league mm-hmm. and uh, Clay Thompson, Damian Lillard, et cetera. So um, and actually shout out to Anthony Simons. He's actually second in the NBA in three pointers made right now. But uh, yeah, I am not selling Buddy Heald. He's just balling out right now. So um, definitely enjoy the ride if you have him. All right. Any other questions in the chat? Nope. Okay. That'll do it for round ball stew. Make sure you watch the, uh, Roto World YouTube channel to for the NBA trade do- trade deadline reaction with Zach Hanshu and others, and uh, we'll be back next week, man. Week eighteen, only a couple weeks into the playoffs, so we got it's grind time. So we got to get to it. Um, we'll see you next week, Raf. I know you won't be watching the Super Bowl, but go <laughs> Birds! All right, thanks, guys.